hello, California. It's nice to talk with you, and eventually I'll, um, I'll log in uh, and, and we'll share some slides and do a little bit of a demo. But perhaps uh, when I just to start things off, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of why auto harvest even exists. And um, John gave you a little bit of a, an overview of that. Let me kind of tell you the story. So back in 2008, 2009, we'll all remember what was happening in the automotive industry with uh, large companies that uh, have been around forever actually failing in the, in the marketplace and, and some even going out of business. And frankly, we weren't sure who was going to be around. Well, while that was happening, these, these R&D footprints for these huge organizations were shrinking dramatically. So these long-term advanced engineering projects that they had underway, these uh, huge uh, cadres of technical fellows that they had armies uh, worth were being let go or retired, and, and they were losing a lot of the prowess they had in the past in R&D. And all the while, it had never been more important to innovate. After all, we saw new powertrains, uh, light weighting technology coming online, telematics with the user communicating with the vehicle, and safety systems with the vehicle uh, communicating with the other vehicle. And all of this was happening at an uh, accelerated rate, and the consumer was demanding it, as you know, being in the aftermarket space. So it happened at the worst time. So these huge companies were losing their prowess in R&D and all the while needing to innovate faster and deeper at the same time. In addition, adjacent markets, think aerospace or even national labs like NASA and small companies such as Silicon Valley uh, were realizing, hey, there's ways we can contribute in automotive and there's ways that we can, number one, take innovations out of automotive and number two, take innovations and put them into automotive so that uh, everybody can thrive together. But all were having a really hard time figuring out how they could communicate with each other. And as John mentioned, we saw the solution as social media via the internet. And really, that's what Auto Harvest Foundation was set out to do, to create an, uh, an open innovation platform for members from small companies, uh, big companies, grassroots innovators, national labs, universities, and everyone in between to be able to come together and really do some very specific things, find intellectual property, technology that they want, and we call them buyers offer their solutions to others. We call them sellers. Or even talk about ways that they can work together in the future, say, on new research and new product development. We call those collaborators. All this is done via our secure online platform, which you're going to see in a moment. And we, as Auto Harvest, I'll mention, are a nonprofit 501c3 foundation. In other words, we're a neutral third party. So everybody, as I said, from that grassroots innovator all the way to the senior vice president, say, at, of advanced engineering at Chrysler, uh, can feel like they're getting a fair shake via the system. Well, who cares about auto harvest? And frankly, this slide is help, hopelessly out of date, and I've given up, up updating it because it looks like uh, a very busy NASCAR vehicle at this point. And I don't know if it'll get much better, but suffice it to say, uh, if you look closely, you'll see some major companies like Ford and GM and Chrysler. You'll see some Tier 1 automotives. You'll see organizations like Drive Oregon in Portland, uh, up the road from where you are, uh, where they're trying to uh, revolutionize electronic vehicles, Auto 21 in Canada. All sorts of different groups from small companies, large companies, trade organizations came together in our interest group to give us guidance to make what it is you're going to see today. And I'm going to jump right into it right now so you can see how our system works. And basically, you're going to see four things. You're going to see posting systems where those buyers, sellers, and collaborators post their capabilities. We'd love to have your stuff in there and have you looking at this, these postings to see if there's opportunities for you to run with. I'll also show you very briefly what a collaboration workspace looks like. This is the online person-to-person uh, -person collaboration space that John alluded to when he was talking that kind of shows you how you can have a private workspace in our system if you so choose. I'm also going to show you something else that I think you'll find very interesting, which is a database of over 75,000 grants that have been given by the federal government in the name of SBIRs and STTRs where uh, you can find technologies or collaborators or potentially even get involved in the next uh, R&D project uh, in spaces that you'll find surprisingly are in your area. 
And then lastly, I'll show you what an organization landing page looks like. This is kind of like a trade show booth. Think the SEMA show, but in a way, a little miniature version that's 24-7 all the time that you can actually have in our system if you so choose to talk about your group in general and then feature information that you brought from the other databases in as well. So I'm going to now jump over to Firefox to give you an actual demonstration. Does anybody have any questions for me right now before I, I go into that? Going once, going twice. Okay. So what I did so far is I just went to autoharvest.org. And again, you've got a little bookmark in your bag that will help you remember the name of this website. And when you go to the autoharvest.org site, this is the public site. I'll just point out a couple things before I actually log in. First, you'll see this nice big red join beta sign. We are in our beta phase right now. I would strongly encourage you to go to autoharvest.org, click that join beta, fill out the application form, mention that you were in this SEMA session, and because of our relationship with SEMA, we're pleased to grant you access. It'll take about 24 hours to have somebody do it, but we're pleased to have you get access to the system right away. So I'll encourage you to do that. That's an action item for you if you like what you see here today. Next, you might even want to scroll through and take a look at some of the recent news we have from working with groups out of Cambridge or um, Oxford, rather, on uh, open innovation platforms. To You can learn what Bill Ford has to say about Auto Harvest and Tech Shop and, and why he and his organizations think this is important. But you can take a look at that. You can look at our old newsletters, all that stuff when you have time. What I'm going to do right now is log into the system. kick the tires with you. So you'll see the first thing that pops up is a reminder that we are in beta, and that's a fancy way of calling it a dress rehearsal, and essentially there are some things that aren't populated, some things that are coming soon, some things that will be happening in the near future. Everything you're going to see today in my demo is operational now. But we also encourage you to use that feedback button to give us feedback and tell us what you like, what you don't like, so we can make the system even stronger for uh, entrepreneurs such as yourself. Now, I had mentioned that there are three databases of postings, technologies that are available, technology needs, and research capabilities. They're right here alongside this left-hand button. It's very intuitive. You click on a button, and you can search for things that are of interest to you. For example, I, I looked over the, the list of attendees here today, and uh, I think uh, clutch. I'll warn you, you have to spell things right. We don't have a spell check yet. I'll just search the word clutch, and you can learn about some clutch technology out of University of Michigan, for example. Suspension. Uh, again, whoops. A lot of technologies coming through that are available, say, via Visteon, University, Michigan State University, some other small companies that, uh, that have also posted things. And you can also do more basic searches, like for example, you could search for companies, uh, like you could type in the word Ford and see what they had posted, for example, or I just typed in the word materials here, and now I start to see small companies, large companies, and uh, national labs, and here we go, Delphi, posting a technology that's available that hit the search term materials. Now, once we click on one of these, I'll zoom in because I know that uh, this is becoming a bit of an eye chart probably for you. Uh, once you click on one of the opportunities that you thought you liked, you click in there and you see a very brief description of what that technology is all about, the technology readiness level, uh, the, the name of the company, etc. Now, as you scroll down, and this is very important, you'll see that they've also attached documents. So in this case, we'll click here, and you'll see very briefly Delphi posting more information about this technology that they have available. Now, if you like what you see, oops, you can click the Respond button, and what happens then is a form will pop up where you can describe what it is you hope to do with this technology. Very brief form. You click Send, and then... Virgil, in this case, from Delphi, gets your message, kind of like LinkedIn. He'll get an email to his um, to, to his uh, Delphi email address, and then he'll um, 
he'll be able to respond directly to you. Now, you could also feature your technologies in there, and all you have to do is reach out to us to let us know you want to do that, and we'll enable that. Now, there's two other databases here, and I'll just briefly show you how another one works. Uh, and, for example, this is technology needs. So if we search this database, this is where groups like NASA, Chrysler, General Motors, uh, JCI, for example, even some small companies, and we'd love to have your small company posting your technology needs in here too, are communicating to the group in a non-confidential format technology that they're interested in finding. Now, for example, we can search this again, and I remember seeing that there was at least one audio company uh, in the group here today. So, for example, I just searched for audio, and then I find a technology posting from uh, Johnson Controls. And much like that technology need that we saw from Delphi, this is the other side of the coin. This is a techno excuse me, a technology available from Delphi. This is a technology need, the other side of the coin. It works the same way. You click respond, the form pops up, you're able to send Dan here an email about what your solution is, and then we'll see where the collaborations might lead. I know we're running out of time, so I'm going to go really fast here, but uh, John did mention that there are uh, collaboration spaces online, too. I'm going to show you briefly what one of those might look like. For example, uh, heat reclam and this is just a mock-up, by the way, heat reclamation technology. If somebody found, a, if a connection was made between you and another party and you wanted to, you can take the conversation offline, if you will, or still online, I should say, but uh, privately, where you can have a certain defined number of parties discussing with each other, posting documents privately for that group, posting comments privately for that group, and then even sending messages one-to-one -one privately to members of that group as you pursue that collaboration. So I showed you the technology postings, technologies available, technology needs, research capabilities that operates the same way. And now the next thing I'm going to turn to is the Federal Opportunities Database. And this is a real treasure trove of information, so I'll take a moment to just walk you through this one as well. So essentially what we did is took 76 roughly thousand awards to small companies over the last 11 years that are now searchable via our database where you can find information about technologies that could be available to you. For example, I know that some of you are in the fiberglass industry. So I just could type in the word fiberglass and all of a sudden 64 technologies pop up that were funded by the feds in fiberglass. Now, I'll click onto one of those and I'll see really briefly now that they received around three quarters of a million dollars. Here's the name of the company. Here's the agency, Department of Defense Navy. You can read the abstract and as you go down, you'll see, aha, here's the contact information, here's the chief financial officer, here's the director of R&D with their phone number, with their email. So now you, as an entrepreneur, as a, as a technology savvy aftermarket group, can find companies that potentially have technology you might need. Maybe you'll reach out to Renegade and license their technology. Maybe you'll reach out to them and get into their next grant application to, to do further research. Or maybe you can just find out about competitors. There's all sorts of different things you can find via that Federal Opportunities Database. Last thing I'll show you real quick is that trade show booth. And uh, I'll use a, a small company. As I mentioned, in addition to posting technologies available, technology needs, research capabilities, companies that come into the auto harvest system can also have that little mini trade show booth, which we call an organizational landing page. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like. So here's a company actually out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, called Quantum Signal. As it happens, they've been funded by that uh, federal grant program where you saw that database recently. But as you can see, they have a little landing page here. And the landing pages, they always lay out the same way. There's the company logo, the company name, rich text. They could have embedded video here in the middle. They could have put photographs, whatever they want. They chose to just do some very basic text there. That's just fine. And then they can have up to six pop-up windows in here to showcase what they wish to showcase. For example, uh, Chrysler posted things about their innovation team. Um, uh, Quantum Signal, uh, they actually posted little demonstration videos of how their system works, and they do, they have a, a system that actually can read, say, street signs and turn that into uh, actionable 
uh, data for the vehicle. And so they're demonstrating their video driving down M14 uh, between Detroit and Ann Arbor. Uh, you can also see their lane departure warning video. You can see their forward collision warning video. And then they also featured a technology that's available in that other database. And guess what? It also, because they asked it to, it'll pull directly to this landing page, too. So not only can you learn about quantum signal, see their video demos, you can also find out about a technology that they're willing to out license. And you just click there. And much like that Delphi example, I'm now on this landing page where I can download backup documents that they posted. There's the backup document. I can respond to them directly via the respond button. And the form pops up. I fill it out. And we're off to the races to see if there's a collaboration. If they like what they see, they can either reach out to you with a quick message, or they can actually start one of those collaboration rooms that I briefly showed you before. So that, in a whirlwind uh, way is a tour of the system. So the last slide I'll show you here is really that call to action. As I mentioned early on, I encourage you to join our beta. You've got a, uh, you've got a bookmark in your bag that reminds you to do that. Go ahead and take that home with you and please join. Uh, we'd also like you to reach out to me via, via that business card. My email address is on there if you wish to add your own content. As we mentioned before, this is something that we're pleased to offer to the SEMA members during our beta. Really, no cost. We want you in because our major companies want to see entrepreneurs and exciting new technologies that we know SEMA has in its membership. So tell us about your technologies, your needs, your capabilities. Put your landing pages up there so that opportunities can find you and just as importantly, you can find opportunities.